What's up, guys? The Amplified Man here, about to kick this weekend's ass. I hope you guys are about to do the same. Usually, we do a weekend update video right about now, but uh, a few factors are, are going to derail that, and that is A, I'm already running late this morning, um, so I got to make this video kind of short, and B, on top of that, no harm, no foul, because there's not a lot of news worthy topics in the news today, right? I mean, I, when I'm looking at the news, the only thing that really stuck out to me was Baron Corbin is having a Twitter battle with a fan because the fan said Baron Corbin was uh, a balding something, a balding flock of cotton balls. or what? I don't know what the fuck he said, but that was the hottest news story. <laughs> I butchered that completely, but Baron Corbin having Twitter battles because people are saying he's going bald. Who cares if he's going bald? Anyway, that's what wrestling... I tell you, man, when another man picks on another man's appearance, there is a self-esteem issue going on. I can assure you of that. So on that one, I'm going to side with Baron Corbin. Um, but that was like the hottest news, so I don't feel too bad at not giving a whole 30-minute, 40-minute uh, weekend update. There's not a lot to go over that I didn't already recently go over. Um, I gave you guys uh, my thoughts on Jericho and Kenny Omega, which was the hottest match uh, publicized and, and marked up match in the past several months. Uh, that match happened on January 4th. And uh, yesterday I put up a highlights video and I put up my thoughts on that. Now the highlights video, as I knew they would, I, I was pushing the buttons of New Japan Pro Wrestling because New Japan Pro Wrestling, when I put up the press conference video, they immediately took that son of a bitch down. And I said, you just don't fuck with New Japan Pro Wrestling. But you guys know I like to push buttons. You guys know... I like to be the asshole, so I was the asshole, and I like to push New Japan's buttons a little more, so I actually took that 35-minute match, I condensed it into 7 or 8 minutes, and I wanted to see how long it was going to take before they took it down. Those son of a bitches, I flew under the radar for about a, a good 10 fucking hours. Um, me and another good buddy is of mine, he, he has a channel, uh, our videos got taken down um, within 2 hours of each other. Um, some videos got to stay up, some videos got taken down. Me and my buddies, they were not, um, <laughs> they were not the, the ones to be granted the gold ticket to stay on the channel. Um, but I like to fuck with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I, I don't know what it is. They're so sensitive that, like, when you fuck with them and I'm, like, the opposite, I'm, like, I like to bring the fight to people. I like to fuck with people that need to be fucked with. So, obviously, I was going to screw around with Japan, and I took that 35-minute awesome match, and I condensed it in 78 minutes, and I'm like, catch me if you can, motherfucker. I'm like the motherfucker that would rob the bank and then stand in the middle of the road like, what are you going to do, bitch? Come on, po, -po. But, um, so it took them a long time, man. We had over 6,000 views by the time they finally got to it, so my peeps already done saw it. Several other peoples that maybe weren't even subscribed to the channel, they ended up seeing it. It was fucking badass, you're too late, New Japan. You can't catch the Amplified, man. I'm too fucking good for you. I'm King Amplified. All right, I'm starting to fucking feel it now, man. Maybe this will be a 30-minute video. Kidding, kidding. I gotta, I gotta go. All right, we already spent the first three minutes not even talking about the subject of this, the sub, the topic of this video, the subject of this video. I guess you could say that too, right? Oh, I'm off the wall today. I feel bad for anyone who's got to fucking deal with me. <laughs> out in the world. I got like four meetings planned. I got to hook up with some people. Uh, they're going to love me today, man. This is pre-coffee. Let's talk about the topic of this video, man. This is a dream match for me. Again, not a lot of news, so we're not going to do a weekend update video, unfortunately, but I am going to discuss a dream match for the Amplified Man. That is Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles in the WWE under their umbrella. Or who am I kidding? They could fight in a Walmart parking lot and I'm going to be there. Uh, you know, he'd take my fucking money. I'm going to be there front row. If there even is a row, it's a parking lot. Front, where, wherever the parking line is, wherever the fuck, wherever it is, I'm going to be the first one and I'm, I'm going to be in the front. All right, there. I'm going to be in the front. So anyway, Brian Styles, just close your eyes. Now picture Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. Fucking A. I mean, I know they've only, what was it, two times? Was it ROH All-Star Extravaganza, whatever it was called. This was years and years ago. And then there was the match in Mid-South, right? I mean, this is when they were very much, much younger, independent days. I don't think that was the same match, right? They definitely fought each other at least once. There's actually footage of that match somewhere, because I remember seeing it, and it was a really good match. 
I, there might have been a second match with ROH, or maybe that was the ROH. Whatever the fuck it was, I've only personally seen them fight one time, and that was thankfully because of a video from Mid-South from years and years ago, which was a really good match, and this is when they weren't at the top of their game yet. Really good match. Daniel Bryan defeated AJ Styles. He had him in a bridge, and he rolled him up into a pinning combination. One, two, three. Daniel Bryan picked up the W. That was then. This is now. A lot has changed. But the only thing that's changed is both have gotten incredibly better. And don't fool yourself. Daniel Bryan came back tomorrow. Daniel Bryan would pick up right where he left off. Granted, a few weeks of ring rest, absolutely. What would take a normal wrestler who took that amount of time off, months to, to get back and gain what he once had and shake off the ring rust, it would take a normal superstar probably months. With Daniel Bryan, maybe a few weeks. That's how good this guy is, how great of a wrestler. And we all know the story of AJ Styles. He became the greatest in the world without a shadow of a doubt over the past couple of years. If nobody else knew about AJ Styles because he wasn't in WWE, or nobody really said, mm, he's really good, but you know, not the greatest, or great, but not the greatest... I think in the last year especially, but even the last two years, ironically, right when Daniel Bryan, February of, what was it, 20, was it 2017? Just last year? he did, No, 2016, I believe. Daniel Bryan announced his retirement. That's right around the time we started seeing AJ Styles just rock the wrestling universe, man. So, I don't know if that's coincidence or not, man. Did Daniel Bryan have to leave for people to really look at AJ Styles as number one? Or, do you guys think... Uh, that if, if Daniel Bryan was there the whole time, AJ Styles would still be the top guy. There's no right or wrong here. So whoever leaves comments, because I do want your guys' opinion on this. Down below, I want you guys to know who's... I, I want to know what you guys think. Who's better, Daniel Bryan or AJ Styles? If they fought, once Daniel Bryan got cleared, once you give him a few weeks to shake off the ring rust, and you get the Daniel Bryan of old versus AJ Styles of today, who would win? Honestly, and, 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 I want, and I don't want anybody fighting in the, in the comments, man, because this is all opinion-based. Because I'm going to drop some facts on you here, and at the end of these facts, you're going to see there's no right or wrong. They're both the best in the fucking world, literally. I want to run over some of the, uh, the tales of the tape on these two guys. Um, first of all, AJ Styles, is, uh, he's billed at 5'11", 218 pounds. 5'11", 218. Daniel Bryan's billed at 5'10", 210. That's right around, I mean, that's about the same height and about the same weight, basically. Give or take a few pounds, give or take one fucking centimeter. I mean, that's not, guys, that's as even as you can get. But let's talk about when they debuted in professional wrestling. Styles billed at 1998 when he debuted. Daniel Bryan billed in 1999. One year difference. Actually, I believe it was like six months difference when you really break it down. So they debuted around the same time. Amazing how close in the tail of tape they really are. I want to run down, right? Everyone likes to go by Pro Wrestling Illustrated's awards and all that stuff. Well, so I'll throw you guys a bone on that. Let's stick with Pro Wrestling Illustrated then. Let's see the tail of tape. Who really wins out in every category? Some of the accolades that each individual picked up from PWI. Match of the year. This is AJ Styles. Some of his accolades from Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Match of the year in 2016, AJ Styles was granted. That was actually against John Cena. Match of the year 2016. Tag team of the year, AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels in 2006. Wrestler of the year in 2016, AJ Styles. Ranked number one of the 500 best single wrestlers of the year in PWI in the PWI 500 2016. So same year. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's just Pro Wrestling Illustrated. I mean, I can run down several different several different publications and articles that would give AJ Styles just so many accolades over his career. This is just one group's opinions, but a lot of people like to go by PWI, uh, one of the most notable publications. But that's all AJ Styles. You say, oh, wow, there's no way anyone could come close to that, right? Well, how about Daniel Bryan's? Because Daniel Bryan got Feud of the Year versus The Authority in 2013 by PWI. Inspirational Wrestler of the Year in 2014. Match of the Year 2013 
SummerSlam against John Cena. Kind of ironic that AJ Styles had his match of the year by PWI against John Cena. Again, that was, when was that, 2016. And Daniel Bryan had his match of the year, which happened to be against John Cena 2013. You could look at that two different ways. One way you could look at it and say, see, John Cena is a good wrestler. He could put on good matches. And you could look at it the other way saying, well, yeah, if you put John Cena with the best in the world, like AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan, that's why Cena was in match of the year. Again, there is no right or wrong, man. They were both just great matches and deserved to be there. Um, so that was match of the year with John Cena 2013, Daniel Bryan. Most popular wrestler of the year in 2013, Daniel Bryan via PWI. Ranked number one of the top 500 best wrestlers in 2014. My point is this. Every accolade that PWI, which people swear by, gave AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan basically picked up the same exact awards and accolades in one way or another, in one year or another. So it could not get more even. Then you can start breaking this match down. Well, who's got the better aerial assault? You could probably say AJ Styles. Who's got the better technical assault? You could probably say Daniel Bryan. Who's got the, the, the bigger fire and passion? You could say they're dead even. That's what makes it fucking hard to choose. They're dead even when it comes to fire and passion. Okay, you say who's got the better, bigger heart? When, when all the chips are on the table, they're fatigued to no end. They, they, they don't have anything left. They're completely gassed. Who's going to give it that last extra oomph? In any other match, you would say AJ Styles if it was against any other opponent. You would say Daniel Bryan if it was against any other opponent. But when you get Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles, you can't tell me who's got the bigger heart or who's got the bigger and brighter fire and passion because they are literally dead even. Again, the only match that I actually got to see them wrestle in, Daniel Bryan picked up the W. That was years and years ago, though, in some rec center down in the Mid-South. Year, the years have gone by, and a lot of has changed. But Daniel Bryan, I don't believe it, in one way or another, has lost a step. He's been sidelined, but you could see it in his eyes. He just has this confidence. Like, the day I'm cleared... I'm rocking the world of pro wrestling once again. I'm fucking taking people out. I am beating the shit out of motherfuckers. I'm getting back in that ring and I'm reclaiming my throne as the best wrestler in the world. But now there's a little issue. Now the world has seen how great AJ Styles is. I want to see this match. I would like to see it in WWE. Man, if it was done perfectly... Sty I don't forget Styles Nakamura and I was the biggest advocate all through the beginning of 2017 I was saying Nakamura Styles WrestleMania it's got to happen make it happen it could still happen actually and I'm going to be okay with that Styles versus Nakamura I just said I I wanted that match all throughout 2017 so of course that's going to make me fucking happy and most likely Daniel Bryan won't even be cleared for WrestleMania so that's why I call this BC's dream match Styles and Bryan um, because I don't even know if it's ever going to happen, and it most likely will not happen at WrestleMania, even though now, lately, they're teasing a lot of dissension between Styles and Daniel Bryan. That storyline is starting to pick up. So if they did want to clear Daniel Bryan, and they did roll with that storyline, wow, how much fun would that be at WrestleMania? But uh, they could. I think it's much more inclined to go Nakamura Styles, which, again, I'm going to be okay with, because then the world gets to see what Nakamura can really do in the ring. But the same problem Nakamura and Styles would have under WWE is the same fear that I have with Styles and Bryan. And that is, would WWE, WWE do it correctly? Would they give them enough time in that ring and would they take the handcuffs off and let them do what they want to do in the match? If WWE lets them go out and be themselves and do what they know they can do and gives them an ample amount of time, at least 35 minutes... Just like Jericho and Omega, like we saw, they actually gave them the 35 minutes. If they at least give them that, I would like to see an Iron Man match, 60 minutes. But if the E gives them at least 35, you are going to be blown away by, by what Styles and Bryan can do in that ring. And that's the dream match that I would love to see. The one match that I would like to see more than Styles and Nakamura in WWE and at WrestleMania would be Styles and Daniel Bryan. And again, if you guys close your eyes, really think about it. Styles versus Bryan in the middle of that ring. Then you know damn well, it is hard as hell to pick who would actually win that match. My sentimental favorite, my favorite wrestler, would obviously be Daniel Bryan. The true David. David, 
in most of his matches where everyone else is the Goliath. But AJ Styles has quickly become my current sentimental favorite because I see the fire, the desire, the heart that he has. Forget the fact that he's actually one of the most skilled, if not the most skilled professional wrestler on the planet. Forget that. Just his passion, desire, and fire in the heart that he has has catapulted him to Daniel Bryan level for me. But if they ever clear Daniel Bryan, the Amplified Man, I got some thinking to do, man. And for me, I know it's going to be one hell of a fun ride to see the storyline lead to the match and then the actual match. And who has their hand raised at the very end? Your guess is as good as mine. Because all at this point, all it is is opinion, guys. That's why nobody attacks each other in the comments. I won't allow that shit. Because it's opinion. Nobody knows. When Daniel Bryan shakes off the ring, once he's cleared, which he's going to be, whether it's the E or not, he's going to ROH, whatever. One day down the road, I think we are eventually going to get, whether it's under E's umbrella or not, maybe an ROH, wherever, we're going to get Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. And when it happens, it's going to fucking blow the wrestling world up, man, because you're going to see what an epic match under E can actually be if they give him enough time. Or an ROH, they're going to really put ROH on that map. If Daniel Bryan goes over there and one day, maybe a few years from now, when AJ Styles calls it quits in WWE, maybe he goes over there for one match against Daniel Bryan. Who knows? But... So basically, guys, that's all I'm going to say on the subject because what more do you say, man? If you honestly close your eyes and you think about Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, we all have our own dream match that we all separately would like to see. But I think you guys can all agree that's in your top five, maybe even most likely should be your top three dream matches um, of all time, man. And I think just seeing Omega and Jericho and seeing something cool like that and original and organic happen like that. And now that that's over, I think my mind was just kind of in the future like, What's next? What would I really like to see? You know what I mean? And again, don't think for one second, Daniel Bryan, when he gets cleared, because eventually he's going to, or he's going to walk away and he's going to be wrestling. He's going to be the same old Daniel Bryan. And uh, don't think for one second, he's going to lose a step, man. AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, fucking goosebumps, dude. Um, drop me a line down below. Let me know what you guys think, dude. AJ Styles or Daniel Bryan. Again, it's all opinion. Nobody knows for sure fact-wise, man. The desire, the passion, the heart in each of these individuals is second to none. Again, I can't say it enough. Forget their wrestling ability. Just the passion, the fire, the heart alone is just second to none with both of these guys. You put them both on a pedestal. You tell me to pick one for the first time as a wrestling fan, 30 plus years, I can't do it. You know, each one has to, has to go in there one more time. They have to go in there together. And I have to choose at the end of that match, one person's hand is going to be raised. And I'm going to see... In my mind, no matter who wins or loses, I have to really make a decision like, wow, it happened, and I have to go with who the fuck I go with. Got to find out once it happens, um, if it ever happens. But all I can say is that you have two individuals that are just the closest together height, weight, when they debuted, um, how good they are, skill level. I mean, as even as a matchup as you could put together, and it just happens to be the two best in the fucking world, in my opinion, Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles. I'm going to shut up because I'm just fucking, uh, I'm, I'm going to mark the fuck out before the match ever even occurs, man, if the match ever occurs. For now, guys, BC Amplify, we're going to kick Friday's ass. More importantly, we're going to kick the weekend's ass. Hopefully you guys do the same. Hopefully there'll be another video this weekend, maybe Monday. If not, you know I'm always going to see you Tuesday for Monday Night Raw's review and reaction. For now, lots of coffee, lots of ass whooping. We'll check you later.